Hi, Dan. All right, I'm going to do your 30-minute psychic reading now. So I really like your what we're exploring here. Um, I'll just kind of explain it for the audience. So you do astral projection and lucid dreaming a lot. And the deeper you go, the more confusing it becomes. And you're easily triggered by demons and end up going into lowest realms to fight steroid style. And then you wake up exhausted, but you're somewhat satisfied with the fighting. <laughs> So you don't want to fight anymore if it's unnecessary. So you just, but maybe it's possible they could be helping me release some rage. I don't know. Um, so we'll explore that. And then also you said, one last thing is I had a dream talking directly with my subconscious and it told me I have come here for cleaning sensitization. I asked what my progress is so far. They told me 12 out of 21 points. And they told me the worst is over, but if you could provide some clarity, that would be good. <laughs> yeah, it's always fun when you get little answers like that. It's like, I don't have a freaking clue what you mean by that. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm just going to relax. Um, one thing that's interesting just to tell you personally, for this astral projection experience, this is really special because not everybody can do that. I, I, so what I'm going to tell you right now is don't fight. You do not have to fight them at all. And you're going to find that when you actually approach them with love, there's going to be a huge lesson learned when you choose to do that and you're going to be sleeping awesomely. And so once you learn how to do that, you don't have to go to lower realms. They want you to feel like you have rage to release. You don't. <laughs> they want to be there to help you get to experience the steroid fighting because that's fun, right? But it isn't. It's time to walk in a different direction. I actually approach them and say, okay, I'm, I'm going to try something new with you. And I'll give them a hug and see what happens. You're going to freak out. And now you can start exploring realms that are extraordinary and beautiful and fascinating and totally uplifting and start learning how to do extraordinary things in that other space, right? My spirit guides want you to know that I do not and have, I mean, I've had a few astral travel experiences, not because I meant to, but they're quite terrifying for me. That was when I was um, a teenager and I haven't really tried to, to do, accomplish that again, but I do have an awareness that uh, going astrally projecting and then having those experiences, you get to choose what you want. I mean, you, can't, you get to choose if you want to fight them or not, but try the other way around and see what happens and you'll be pleasantly surprised <laughs> but let's let me just relax here and then we'll see what my spirit guides say about the astral projection and the demons and the and the dream and all of that the subconscious let me just recap on this with my own mind um subconscious cleaning sensitization 12 out of 21 points all right so i'm gonna just want to relax we'll just see what the first picture is okay <laughs> Um, we're instantly touching your heart. Instantly we see your heart and it is glowing with white light. Your heart is literally like in the heart shape <laughs> and then it's glowing with white light. Instantly a beautiful loving feeling that's coming forward. It's fascinating because it's surrounded by red, but there's white light that is, is sort of glowing like a stone or something, like a light on the inside of a crystal clear stone and so it's just glowing and so then there's just sort of red hue and then it's white light coming out from there too um light that is touching other people's hearts from your heart specifically your heart touching other people's hearts with love light <laughs> I, I don't know why, but it's something so, it's like almost we just want to start laughing for no reason. I see your heart spin, making a spin, but it's interesting. So hearts this way, right? And then it spins upside down and it's almost like I'm unlocking a door, like it's a door handle and I just turned it to open up, um, unlock a mystery or something in relation to your heart. Um, we're opening you up like you're a doorway of your own kind. And it's, this heart has really got light going in all different directions in this space. I see your heart suspended in the space full of light. You're very strong. I mean, you have a lot of inner strength and courage and solidity even. Because there's an attempt to try to break your heart and it's just not even possible. It's really impressive. I can't do anything. It's very well protected and surrounded by just a solidity and trust in heavenly light. 
it's really important you know that. It's very red in here too, which is really strong, powerful love energy. I'm hung I'm doing something here. It's like I'm starving for love. I like trying to eat your heart, but it's not like I'm doing it in an evil way. I'm not like, I'm going to eat his heart out, you know? It's just like, there's an actual an interaction, like, it, the picture means that I'm starving for love. So, I don't know what that means to you. I'm, I'm just interacting with your heart still. You there's something that get, got really sour about it. Something that just felt like too much. And the door closes. And there's I feel just so pissed off right now, like like a, even a fist sh smashing down on top of the doorway. And I could just break everything. I just rip everything apart. And that feels really good. I mean, I could just punch the doorway. I could punch myself in the face right now. Because I'm looking at you, right? You're the doorway. Thing is, is your heart's very dazzling. It's very gorgeous. It's very beautiful. Very strong. Very courageous heart. Very impressive. But yet, there's this vulnerability. No wonder it is, it is something feels good about the fighting experience. Because there is some part of you that has to get it out, you know? Sort of like you get frustrated in life, you just want to scream, but guess what? You're kind of surrounded by people and you can't have a mental breakdown and nobody really relates to us just screaming, I don't know, for no reason. <laughs> that is inappropriate behavior in public places. <laughs> so you just hold it inside. So now you can go astrally project and go fight a bunch of demons and it feels really good, right? But what is it really accomplishing? <laughs> it's not accomplishing the true healing for you it's not true healing and now you just wind up feeling exhausted all the time that's why abby talks about love <laughs> now they're talking about they're showing me a scene they're showing me um let's pretend scene i get to see you and you're here in a space and they're facing what is quite a conglomeration of a lion like a lion head very vicious teeth um, on like a bull body that's standing upright. I mean, it's just a conglomeration of sort of animal body parts and it's massive and it's just full force. And and I can't seem to get excited about fighting him. <laughs> I did at first, but now I realize that you're not love and you're never going to heal my heart. You're just going to wear me out and it's fun to get the anger out but it's not the right version of healing getting the anger out does help does create healing but sometimes we get addicted to that version of healing and then it becomes not healing then it becomes hurtful and painful so we have to transform that need into something new and so when you actually just say stand down and say you know thanks i actually really needed to go down that pathway really needed to get all of this out but I really am starting to see now that it's not the right version of love for me. It's not true love. And and there's some real blessing in this experience. It's really it's really a wonderful thing. You actually are able to give this creature a hug, although the creature is not there to be hugged. The creature is there to help you um, release your anger and emotions. Um, upon it but it just it thrives on that sort of energy and it's not it doesn't like what love feels like just like you're teaching that part of you not to want to f be fed love real love so you're hungry for real love you need to get real love okay real love nourishment so now let's try a different scene let's let's see what happens when you choose to astral project into a space of heaven let's see how you react there I just, I, f I feel really, I feel overwhelmed by the light right away. And I feel like it's too much uh, for for starters. Like, can we start somewhere maybe not that bright or maybe that much? Not, I feel vulnerable in it. I feel exposed. I feel like you can see too much of my nooks and crannies that I my ego feels more comfortable with you not seeing that. <laughs> 
my ego doesn't want you to see that the thing is is it's not about them seeing it's about them feeling and there's an, a shame experience that takes place it, i'm telling i've had i know what the feel feeling is it's ex, it's ridiculous it's like you stand before an angel and the angel and you can be a very loving person but the angel is so pure that the light penetrates your body and you feel so ashamed you feel so ugly you feel so it's just the ego can't tell it tolerate it <laughs> and so you have to work up to it you have to work up to it so we just start small we'll just start by by going back to the other realm and hugging the guy and then and then say i would like an angel to come here in this space with me can you take me to then a new level or new version of an experience so i can work on feeding myself love that is nourishing helps me sleep good and helps me learn about love and they say, yes, yes, we heard you. Angels on the way. <laughs> Don't you want to hang out with angels? There's some really good looking angels out there. <laughs> As opposed to some really odd conglomerated demons. <laughs> you might really like the angels. <laughs> you really might. <laughs> then now you have a beautiful, beautiful angel before you. And now you're mesmerized. That alone in this dark space is enough <laughs> that alone is overwhelming that alone is pure and honest and true and now you start to realize that everything else that you've been doing this whole time was just an illusion it was just you fighting something out and it never was healing it never was this was the healing all along this was it and so now you trust in this angel and then you take the angel's hand and now you feel the angel's energy entering into your body and it's so beautiful it touches your hand and then it channels up your arms through your body through your head through your torso through your everything through your legs everything and now you're starting to discover that real what real love feels like is way better than that other <laughs> it's totally way better i mean you feel like you're releasing from whatever your whatever you call your divine reflection now you feel like you feel like shedding that as a skin and um raising your vibration into an entirely new version of yourself something that is far more filled with light than it ever than you've ever known something that can that can process and digest light more than you've ever felt it before and now that alone starts to lift you up into higher realms of expression and higher realms of love. So you can tolerate more and more love, more light. And now you're not blinded by it. You're actually embraced by it. You can see through it, see into it, and see all around it and see that you are a part of it. You always were. <laughs> so you have to start somewhere and it, you'll get up there really quickly. This angel actually wants to take you places, wants to show you everything wants to show you so much it's sort of like um <laughs> i don't know like you had a magical pin pal you never knew you had and that pin pal is like yes you finally got it oh i'm so glad now i can actually hang out with him and show him everything i'm gonna take him to all the cool spots i'm gonna show him all the stuff that he forgot and you know like that it's totally fun too totally exciting totally extraordinary totally new flavor of of an experience is so worth it to you and so she's magical <laughs> i don't know what it is about her but i like her she's golden and she's got a very charismatic smile she's very intelligent and she knows you inside and out she knows all of your weaknesses, all of your strengths, and she loves all your weaknesses, all of your strengths. She loves all that you are. She adores you. She wants you to come visit her. It's time to come knock on my door. <laughs> Why are you not knocking on my door? <laughs> it's beautiful. Let's see what else. I'm sort of, I'm exploring the numbers 12 and 21, which is interesting because is it 12, is it 21? You switch them from one direction. So you say, let's say I'm at 12, 
out of 21 points. You say, what if I'm at 21 points out of 12 points? <laughs> it's like I, I'm well past wherever I was trying to be. Why can't you just switch the numbers around? Why can't it just be 21 points? You always were at 21 points. They tricked you. They weren't telling you right. <laughs> There's something about this. About the numbers 1, 2, and then 2, 1. And they both equal 3. And so are you 12, which equal, are you 1 plus 2 equals 3, or are you 2 plus 1 equals 3? Or are you balanced, 3 equals 3? How do you want to perceive it? <sighs> They're altering the scene, so I gotta change my pattern right now. I don't know what we're gonna see next, so just give me a minute to get through this. <sighs> it's pretty heavy weight. <laughs> I mean, it's very heavy. It's extremely heavy. I can't hardly get through it yet. <sighs> All right. <laughs> That's probably the heaviest transition I've ever felt before. <laughs> oh, man. All right, let me relax and we'll see what happens next, okay? Something just feels so exhausting in the mind. Something feels like it's time for a change. This whole life has just been one, has been one and two, 12. But we're gawking through the revolving doors, so now all we know is two and then one, 21. It's about life shifting its identity from one reflection right to left to the other reflection left to right. So what was challenged now becomes easy. What was right to left is now left to right. Easy, hard and then easy. They're talking about that. Talking about your reflection, walking through the infinite mirror of your identity. You, they're showing me you walking through a mirror and the glass shatters and now you see several mirrors before you the mirrors are morphing and altering their directions um, sort of like you have a man he's got three three cups upside down and in one of them there's a marble and he's moving them around like this so which which cup is it which cup has a marble and so all the mirrors there's three separate mirrors they're moving themselves around and so we're moving the mirrors around so which is the mirror that, who cares? We don't even know which mirror it was in the first place. Nobody told us which one had the marble on the other side. They can move the mirrors all they want. It's still, still three mirrors. One, two, three. One, two, three. Two, one, three. There's something about this. We're watching. I just choose the mirror in the middle. So I, I want to go into this mirror. I, I, a part of my mind says, but what if it's one? But what if it's over here? What if it's this one? Or what if it's that one? What, how do I know for sure if this is the right one? They say it's always the right one. Whichever one you pick is always the right one. And whatever one you pick is always the right one. So whether you walk in this door or this door or this door, it's going to take you to the place that you were meant to be. And so we can pick any door and whatever's on the other side is the same beautiful dream that would have been door number one or door number three, whatever. And then spirit guys say, do you believe that's true? Do you believe in that? That's what they're saying. They're asking you that question. They're asking me that question. And I say, yes, I do. They're saying, but what about, is destiny already created or do you create your own destiny and I say it's both it always was both so they're saying so you can manifest new dreams whenever you feel like it and I'm saying it always was a mirror of your own reflection if your reflection is you're in pain and trauma then what you see is pain and trauma if your reflection is light and love then what you see is light and love there's something about this because as human beings 
we have such diverse experiences that it does not feel as though the, our experience is a part of our reflection. Some people are high and mighty in life and then they lose everything. So how is it that they went from being so happy to now being so miserable? They that how What happened to the reflection? It's a rebalance of the energy vibration. It's a new exploration. And that can happen even in the middle of a lifetime. So you just trust in the mirror, the mirror. You just trust that you're part of heaven and you're part of the experience and whatever, wherever the experience takes you. It's like going down the water slide that's, you know, it's like the black tunnel. You don't know when you're going to hit the dips or when you're going to hit the huge spiral thing or the whatever. You don't even know when you're going to get to the end of this thing. You just trust and then you scream the whole time, right? <laughs> or you're like, yes, <laughs> no. You know, it's your life. It's your journey. It's your experience you just let it take you places and you don't worry about anything else you just enjoy the journey and just let it be whatever it is meant to be but let it be a part of love let it be a part of your heart okay so if you happen to be high and mighty and then you lose it all it's fun and it is fun right it's just two different versions of fun and now you have to alter your perception of how can i find the fun in my new experience it's a journey of excitement right it's a journey of life so i don't know i just feel tired sometimes you just feel tired on this journey sometimes you just want to take a break you know sometimes you just I just want life to stop for a little while. Sometimes I just want that. Isn't that okay to just take a break from life? I just see you sleeping on a bed and you just... It's almost like this version of a reality is far more exciting than the real world, right? He doesn't want to experience fighting, you know, steroid fighting crazy conglomeration monsters and just getting it all out, you know? And then you come back to the real world and then it's about getting your groceries and then hauling him up a bunch of stairs and putting him away. <laughs> and whatever, you know, you got to pay for things. You don't have the money or your car breaks down or, you know, it just it just feels like life is just always just a pig pen and more more annoying experiences, you know. But in the lucid dreaming and the astral projection experience, it's it's you are in command of your own experience. You are in control of your own experience. But here it does not feel that way. It feels like the experience controls you. It's hard here. So I get that. So I'm just watching. Let's see what happens next. They're, they're talking about a very unique and very important learning experience that it's, it, you have to start exploring this now. The, there's a reason why, there's a reason why everything. And it is time they're really talking, this is very loud, this is very important. You need to explore doing it differently, okay? So the next astral projection you do, you explore it differently. You have teachers that are ready to meet you and they want to start teaching you how to do things in the astral projection world. There's something important you're supposed to be learning and it's very, very important for the work you're meant to do in this lifetime. And there are teachers there who love you so much and want to help you and are going to teach you very extraordinary things that you can bring back into our reality and then share with people. And I don't know on what level is it wisdom? Is it healing? I'm not sure what it is. But I all I all I know about it is that they are very bright, full of love, and the wisdom is extremely aligned and attuned with love. Everything that you haven't been doing, you need to be doing. No more fighting for you. <laughs> Just love for you. <laughs> so Their spirit guides that, um, there's several spirit guides. They're welcoming you with open arms. They want to work with you. I, they aren't saying whether or not you already know them or, but they're there waiting for you. They've been waiting for you to come to this realization. They've been waiting for you to be ready and now you're ready. 
Your 1-2 has now become 2-2-1. Two, two, it's like 1-2 punch, no. 2-1 love. <laughs> that is what it, you need now. <laughs> door number one, number two, number three. Uh, you merge them together. Now there's only one door. What door is it? One, two, and three. <laughs> it was three equals three all along. <laughs> it is oneness. Now you enter it and find what is there in the dark, um, the black um, water slide of life. <laughs> It is going to be an exciting journey for you, they say. Um, one where you're filled with a lot of joy, a lot of happiness. Um, I mean, I feel your heart beating. I feel you laughing. I feel you're on a joy ride, a thrill ride um, to the unknown. But it is so exciting. It is so much better than it's ever been before. I mean, this is the best ride of my life. It's finally happened for me. And that's what it feels like. It feels like the best ride of your life. So again, they're asking, so what is worth it? You want to go astral project and fight, or now is love the value? Do you start to see now why love is so important? True love. So I'm just waiting for the next thing. I just keep thinking about baseball. I feel, I think about your infinite heart portal reflection so beautiful it's sort of like a super like diamond that has like a million cuts in it so it's like a disco ball right but it's like a diamond and then that is so bright and so beautiful in this one it's rounded it's not the heart shape that they showed me in the get-go and this one has all these cuts the heart was smooth it didn't have any cuts in it at all um, to make the light reflect but this they're showing me you the super gorgeous super extraordinary my massive diamond <laughs> cut with a million different things and then light coming through it in all different directions but you're sort of playing baseball with it but you're it's interesting because you're playing baseball with an actual baseball this is sort of hanging in your heart portal but there's something about the playing it's something interconnected about them so heart portal and playing the game of life kind of thing game of life in the physical with the baseball or the spiritual game of life full of your infinite reflection which is in your heart is the love right the excitement the joy the love of the experience you're gonna it's a crack shot it's a home run one he goes past first he goes past second he goes back third base and now he's home he's sliding into home he wins the game we all hooray we're all just so excited for you you're going to be successful they're talking about how you are you've got this thing you're very solid very grounded you have this thing um you're ready for the next uh, step and it's a big one and it has a lot to do with spiritual experiences and spiritual experiences that take you places in your life. And it's going to be a home run. And you're not, it's not, not going to be a home run. You're going to be totally successful with what you do. That is very sincere. There's no question about it. I mean, you are running the entire game. You're the only per, it's sort of like the field is full of players, but yet you are the one in control of the entire game you decide how it all pans out but you're so good at it that it's you could do it with your eyes closed and you're going to hit a home run every single time that's how this feels i'm just watching the game i'm looking for a moment where Maybe you have or lose your confidence or something. Right now, at this moment, I, in the experience of the now experience, you're very successful in whatever this is going to become for you. You seem to know, you seem to know, and you seem to know is right. Um, this reading is right, and that the time is right, and that everything about this was. You seem to know it already. You seem to kind of know this was the truth, but you just needed somebody to tell it to you. And now I've told it to you, so now you trust it, and now you're ready for it, and now you know that it is the now time. It is the. It's always been the now time. It just wasn't quite the right time just yet, because you just needed that extra bit of confidence. So let's see what else. We're talking about the book of your life. 
I mean, there's some sort of celebrity interaction here. I see a book that we close the book, we turn it around to the person on the other side of this desk, they open it and sign the book. I mean, there's something about it that's kind of got a celebrity flair to it. Like, I'm putting an autograph in there. I don't know if you have dreams of being a writer someday, but it's sort of the book of your life and it is being signed. And it's kind of an autograph sort of style sensation to it. There's, it just, and now the book is being turned around and then it is sitting there being handed to the person on the other side. Everything is calm and peaceful. I feel I'm being taken to a whole new scene where the where society and life and the human world is the last thing on my mind. All that I want to do right now is be on this sort of swing which is on a deck of a gorgeous sort of home and it's, I mean, there's so many spaces intertwined here. I mean, what would be like a log, uh, like a gorgeous architecturally designed home and uh, w like some old amazing wood? And the like you're so high up that you can see across very tall trees. And you can even see there's a mountain and a gorgeous sunset on the horizon. It's sort of a conglomeration of extremely green, like evergreen trees. And there's white top to the mountain. The, the air is perfect. I do not feel cold at all, although it's cool, but I don't feel chilly or anything. I just want to, I'm on a sort of a swinging chair and I'm just rocking and I'm using my foot to kind of push the chair back and forth like this. And I'm just in a total, I'm just daydreaming. I mean, I'm totally off in a fantasy daydream right now as I'm watching this beautiful scenery. And it has absolutely nothing to do with cars, traffic, um, society, people's problems, Walmart. <laughs> has nothing to do with any of that. It has everything to do with just an escape, a total escape. And I just feel freedom out here. I just feel freedom to be who I am out here where I make sense out here. It just, something about this scene is just right for me. I feel freedom, I feel disconnected, I feel no attachments to what was, the sort of leaving the world behind is what this feels like. It's odd because it's not as if it's a vacation, it honestly feels like a, a home that you're going to live in or I mean, it literally feels like a home you're going to live in. I do not get the vacation sensation about this. I do not get, you need a vacation. I get, you. I get, this feels like a home you will live in, that you will help escape you from the craziness of the human world. But it also uh, simultaneously feels like sometimes you just feel like you need to escape. Um, and so you can do this experience in your own mind, in your own fantasy world. I mean, it's as real as this. H how am I supposed to determine if your fantasy world is an illusionary world? Your dream is intertwined with your heart, and so therefore it is as real and as solid as real life, which is why this feels like a future home, like a real world place to me. In this, it feels absolutely real to me. I can't experience the fantasy, although it feels like your mind can go into extraordinary worlds that are as real as our human world, just like this. And so what is the difference between our world and whatever this fantasy world is? They feel the same. So you get to decide what that means to you. They want you to sign your book with love, and they want this book of life, this book that is you, they're bringing out the heart and the love within you so that it can touch others, is what they say. The love that creates light, that brightens other people's worlds. But you seem to just do this on your own accord. Is You just walk around and your light just touches people, and somehow you just transform people without realizing that you're doing it. Just your energy field that makes an impact on other people's life experience. Is this weird? All right. <laughs> okay, Dan, that is your psychic reading. <laughs> Thank you for this experience. Um, I'll be curious to see what it means to you. And um, so that is all for now. And for those of you watching in the audience, if you'd like to connect with me personally, you can do so by visiting my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Thank you for watching.